the king of Assyria invaded Judah and took away some spoils. But King Sennacherib was not pleased and he was not happy because he wanted total conquest. Then one day, my Bible says, in 2 Kings, chapter number 18 and the verse number 13, that now in the 14th year of King Hezekiah, did Sennacherib, the king of Assyria, come up against all the fenced cities of Judah and took them. Verse 17 says, and the king of Assyria sent Tatan and Rapsaris and Rapshaki from Lachish to King Hezekiah with a great host against Jerusalem. And they went up and came to Jerusalem. And when they were come up, they came and stood by the conduit of the upper pool, which is in the highway of the fullest field. And when they had called to the king, there came out to them Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah, which was over the household, and Shibna, the scribe, and Joah, the son of Asaph, the recorder. And Rabshakeh said unto them, Speak ye now to Hezekiah. Thou sayest the great king, the king of Assyria, what confidence is this wherein thou boasted? And I want you to go to the verse number 26. Then said Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah, and Shibna, and Joah, unto Rabshakeh, speak, I pray thee to thy servants in the Syrian language. For we understand it and talk not with us in the Jewish language, in the ears of the people that are on the wall. And Rab Shaki said unto them, Has my master sent me to thy master and to thee to speak these words? Has he not sent me to the men which sit on the wall that they may eat their own dung and drink their own peace with you? Then Rabshakeh stood and cried with a loud voice in the Jewish language and spake saying, hear the word of the great king, the king of Assyria. I know the question you'll be asking in your head is, what has this scripture got to do with Jesus? We said Jesus, by the time we realize, pastor is talking Rabshakeh and Hebrew and Assyria. But Every name you see in the Bible can be a type of something else. So Melchizedek is a type of Christ. Joseph is a type of who? Christ. David, a type of Christ. When you see strategic names, Abel, a type of Christ. Another type of Christ I see in the Bible is this man called Rabshake. But you see, the Rabshake is a hidden man. He is an unbeliever. So you are likely to write him off and say that an unbeliever has nothing to do with the kingdom of God. But one day Jesus said something to the people who were listening to him. He said, he said something. He said, the sons of this world are in their own, own generation wiser than the sons of light. But he then said, the Lord commended the unjust steward. Now, Jesus was trying to say, there is a time when you can learn something from unbelievers and from the heathen. You read your Bible, and the Bible will say, Cyrus, the king of Persia, though he was an unbeliever, the Bible said, God called him the anointed of the Lord. Rav Shakeh and two other officials of King Sennacherib came to the land of Judah and they tormented the Judites. The Bible said three messengers were sent. Everybody say three. Come on, give me the verse number 17 again. 
2 Kings 18, 17. 2 Kings 18, 17. Why is it keeping so long? Or oh, the, the computer is suffering, suffering spiritual warfare. Okay, let me use. Okay. And the king of Assyria sent everybody shout Tatan. Everybody shout Rapsaris. Everybody shout Rapshaki. So he sent three men. I want you to say again, Rapshaki. I don't want you to leave this meeting today. And when they say, what did pastor preach about? He says, ah, whether it's Rob or Akobam. Somebody say, Rapshaki. Okay. Now, this Tatan, Rapsaris, and Rapshaki, they are not the names of people. They are the offices the people occupy. The Tartan was the army commander. That word Tartan comes from the Hebrew word Tartanu. And it means the commander in chief. The supreme commander. That was the commander in chief of the armed forces of Assyria. He is the second in command. The supreme commander. The commander in chief of the army. That man was noted for his boldness, his courage, his strength, his power, and his bravery. The next name, the Rab Saris, Rab Saris comes from two names. One of them is Rab, and the other one is Saris. Rab means mighty, it means captain, and it also means great. Saris is an official officer or a eunuch. That man was the first eunuch of the palace of the king. He was the chief public servant. You can call him the head of administration. You can call him the head of protocol. You can call him the chief of staff of king of Assyria. Powerful politician. The man was a diplomat. He was the one who kept the account of public revenue. And when the king subjugated other nations and they were forgetting or refusing to pay tribute, Rab Saris was the one who compelled them to pay the tribute to the king. This man was a very powerful man, noted for academics, noted for skill, noted for sheer brilliance. The man was an intelligent man, articulate, good organizer, good officer. But the man, Rab Shake, did not have the bravery and the courage and the, and the, and the boldness of, of, the, of the... He didn't have the bravery and the courage of the Tatar. He did not also have the intelligence, the skill, and the academic capacity of the Rab Saris. But that man, Rab Shake, Rab means mighty. Rab means captain. Rab means great. Shaka is a word which means cup bearer or drink or water. And the Rab Shake, therefore, was the chief butler of the king of Assyria. He used to take drink and give it to the king. He would take the king's water and serve the king. He will prepare the king's wine and give it to the king. That man would take anything that the king needed and give to the king. Now, so, among all the officers of King Senachery, the closest to him was the Rabshaki. For example, there are many, many, many people. I know. Pastor Mike, Senior Sandy, Mama Comfort, Chairman Clement, None of them is close to me like my daughter Ajua. Do you understand what I'm saying? None. No, nobody's closer to me than her. She brings me my food. She knows what I want. She knows the way I think. If you want to know the way I think or you want to guess, is daddy happy this week? Or angry? Or sad? The best is to call Ajua and find out how is the man. Now, if you ask Pastor Mike, you may not know. 
Now, of course, mommy is in a different class altogether. She is in her own obey. You see that when I left this room, she followed. Because she's an obey. She has to make sure my tie is in the wrong, is in the right position. If I put it in the wrong place. So that, that is a different matter. But I'm just talking about people who normally are around somebody. For example, in this building right now, if you ask me who is the most important, now I'm laying hands on people. Some are falling under the power. Um, sound is being produced. Somebody's doing my microphone for me. But the most important corner is where Cynthia and Mavis are sitting. The ones who prepare my water. One day, I remember, somebody attacked one of them. I sacked the person from the church. Ah, if you can fight with the one who is giving me water to drink, why should you be sitting here? I sent her a message, don't come to this church again. And that was the end. Because you have fought a water server. And life is water. 70% 70 of your obolobo body sitting in this chair right now by weight is water. So some of you who weigh yourself on the scale and you say, I am very, very heavy. Water. Somebody shout water. Can I hear somebody say an amen? amen. Now so, the Rab Shake was the closest person to the king. Now, he sent three men. Why is this person running away like that? He sent three men, the Rab Saris, the Tartan, and the Rab Shake. Now go to the verse number 19. But the verse number 19 says, And Rab Shake said unto them, Speak ye now to King Hezekiah. Now look at this. Sent three men. Tatan, army commander. Rab Saris, chief of staff. Rab Shake, butler, chief butler, server and preparer of wine. I'm sure if you had sent those three people, the one who may speak will be the army commander. No, this is army commander, bro. And if the army commander is quiet, you may tell the chief of staff to speak. But when they got there, I'm sure the two gentlemen said, you know what? You know this man more than all of us. You are the one he talks to. You give this wine. You do this. You are the one who does that. So you know what? You do the talking. The one who came from the bosom of King Sennacherib did the talking. And this man had many qualities I have written in this book. He was a representative. He was a worshiper. He was a contender. He was an enforcer. He was many things. But one thing he was, which I wrote in, I don't know whether that is the last chapter or whatever. I, I guess that is the last chapter. In the last chapter, I wrote something about the man. I said he was an intimidator. Everybody say intimidator. Oh, in these last days, brother, the most important thing about you is how close you are to God. How close? It's not further steady so. Especially for those of you who are pastors. And you think to do your work well. You need more education. Education does not do ministry. Education. Education doesn't do ministry. There are people in our churches who have been trained to do that. If you are going to study for two years, go and study something that will make you more spiritual and make you understand the Bible more. That is my belief. For example, you can imagine a pastor who is pastoring in a church and he's going to university and you ask him what I'm going to study and he says civil engineering. How many bridges are you going to build? Or I'm going to study banking. Are you going to open a bank? I remember there was a time I started asking questions. I wanted to study and actually what I wanted to do was Bible studies. So I was asking around various universities I even discussed it with my friend, Dr. Menzo Tabor. I said, I, I want to do master's in theology. They said, no, no, no. Since I don't have the bachelor in theology, 
I cannot do masters in theology. I said, ah, ah, me, bachelor. When I married in 1988, bachelor. I should go for bachelor in theology. Take your tip. I said, even the masters, I won't do it again. Because you see, the number of years I will use to write theses for masters, I can use it to write 30 books. To bless the body of Christ. I, I said, you know what? Take your masters, take your doctorate, take your degree. Leave me alone. I have one degree nearer my God to thee. Lord, let me come nearer you. Let, let me stay in your presence. You know what? It is better to pray for seven hours than for you to read for three years, learning history. Ancient history. A pastor went to university. They said, what I said, he said, Roman history. And that's because, you see, sometimes you just want the pride of, I have also gone to university. But the Rab Shakai was noted for being close to God. One day, a certain pastor told me something. They said, why don't you like a title? You know, you know we can confer a bishopric on you. You know the thing about that thing they call honorary doctorate. I have received it three times and thrown them away. In fact, one day I was there when my daughter, Daphne, my executive secretary, she said, a group of people have written a letter. They said they've seen my work and my work is very good. They want to confer honorary doctorate on me. I read the letter. I said, Daphne, I beg you, write them and tell them my power has not reached there yet. They should keep their doctorate. But Dick Mabadi, Mandola Yisa. They should take. They should take their thing. I said, I said, you know what? I don't need it. One day another pastor told me something. He said, You need this bishopric because when you are going into foreign countries to preach and you go there and you say you are a bishop, doors will open. I said, Me. What bishop did I use to enter the first door? A man from Damaltindon. I didn't go to my first door in the name of bishop. I went in the name of I'm a preacher. Am I talking to somebody at all? Listen, this preacher is not saying education is not important. I have a bachelor's in pharmacy and um, that one I don't know where the certificate is but I tried. But, but I'm telling you, we, we chase things that are not necessary. You see believers and these days we are not close to God. Pastors, the same way. I have preached rapture case spirit and I'm like, Lord, sometimes I wish you could take this microphone away from me. Withdraw me from preaching so that I will have more time to pray and more time to worship. Because this microphone is a problem. I remember years ago when I used to think I would like to preach all my life. These days it's not like that. These days, I'm like, Lord, if you can raise other preachers and you have other people to preach, oh yeah, just raise them, let them do this preaching. Let me, let me rest and let me spend my time rather praying. I look at Rab Shake, I look at Rab Saris, I look at the Tartan, and when they got there, it was the Rab Shake who spoke. So you know what, man of God, you may be anointed, educated, powerful, politically strong, whatever, the thing that qualifies you to speak for God will be your closeness to him when you have the rapture spirit. And this rapture was a first class intimidator. The man could intimidate. Look at his words. Verse 27 and 28. And rapture said unto them, has my master sent me to your master and to you to speak these words. Has he not sent me to the men who sit on the wall that they may eat their own dung and drink their own peace with you? Stop there. Profane. Because you see, when he was speaking, Hezekiah's messengers, they started begging him. 
They said, you know what? You speak the Assyrian language because you are embarrassing us. If you speak the Assyrian language, we the bosses, we can understand it. Then we will interpret it to the people the way we want to tell them. But the way you are speaking the Hebrew language, you are disgracing us. He said, look, I have not been sent for any private conversation to talk to you, the leaders, and to talk to your king alone. I'm sent to talk to these ordinary people that are sitting on the wall and listening so that they will eat their own dung and their own peace. Now, for you to tell people, I have come to tell you to eat your own kashi, drink your own boli, it's a very big insult. And after that, look at what he did. Look at the verse number 28. After that, Rabshakeh stood and cried with a loud voice in the Jews' language and spoke, saying, Hear the words of the great king, the king of Assyria. Somebody shout out, amen. The man came from the great king of Assyria. He didn't fear anything. He didn't fear devil, didn't fear demon. At a certain point, he even told them, he said, you guys think God is on your side. But it is God that sent me to come and destroy Jerusalem. The man was bold. I mean, even God was not enough to intimidate him. Because he came from the presence of the king of Assyria. Judah was there intact. The king of Assyria wanted to take Judah. He sent the man. And the man came from the bosom of the king. The cup bearer. One with the king. United with the king. Strong with the king. In fellowship with the king. In consultation with the king. Once upon a time. A world lay in darkness. The devil had a field day. Took hold of the captives that were on earth. Bound them with sin. Bound them with sickness. Bound them with death. Bound them with chains. And then the king of the whole universe. Like King Sennacherib. The king of the entire earth. His name is God the Father. Seated in heaven. Wanted to send somebody to the earth. He said whom shall I send? Who will go for us? And there was the lion of the tribe of Judah, the son of the living God in heaven, like Rab Shakeh. He said, send me, I will go. And God sent Jesus into the world like King Sennacherib sent Rab Shakeh into the world. Jesus came into the world without much education, without much qualification, the son of a carpenter. He made a few friends, fishermen, friends unlearned and ignorant men were his friends he came he didn't know letters he came anonymous he came unannounced born by a virgin belonging to a father who was a non-entity jesus of nazareth the son of the living god you can say many things about him that are comparable with what the rab shakeh was he was a worshiper he was a strategist he was a linguist he was a contender he was an enforcer but there is one thing about jesus which no one can take from him and that is the fact that jesus was an intimidator when he came to the earth none could intimidate him he came into a world satan could not intimidate him no power of darkness could intimidate him the man came like rab shake he said i am coming from the bosom of the father no man has seen the father before but i am coming from the father because i and the father i won the father is my father the father is my god we are one united in the godhead i come from the presence of the father and like rab shake was bold to declare the word of god and the word of king Sennacherib to the judaize jesus came from the presence of god to declare the word of god and no devil no principality could stop him one day one day in the wilderness rebuke the devil so strong rab shaki was sent to capture Jerusalem. Jesus was sent to take back the earth from the devil and hand it over to God, to believers, to children of God like you and I. You read in your Bible 
And the Bible said in First John chapter 3 and the verse number 8, for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. I hear Jesus say, the thief cometh not, but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. And Jesus came into the world, and you know what? The devil tried to intimidate him. You know what, ladies and gentlemen? We are not called to run away from intimidation. We are also not called to fight back intimidation. We are supposed to intimidate the enemy. After today, may you become an intimidator. May you become a terror. Am I talking to somebody? For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested. That he might destroy the works of the devil. That is why they call him the lion of the tribe of Judah. One day in the wilderness, fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, the devil came to him and began to tempt him. Command stone to be turned into bread. He said unto Satan, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. He said at the certain point, took him to the top of a pinnacle. He said, if you can jump down, God will take hold of you. He said, thou shall not tempt the Lord thy God. Then he took him to a mountain, showed him the glories of the world, and said, if you can bow down and worship me, I will give you these things for the possession. And Jesus said, get thee hence, Satan. He intimidated the devil. He said, Satan, change your position. You are standing in front of me now, but Satan, from now, get behind me. Get the hands. Any one of you here, if Satan is standing in front of you to resist you, if Satan is standing on your side to resist you, he said, as my father has sent me, even so sent are you. If there is any devil standing in front of you to resist you, standing by your side to accuse you, tonight we speak to that devil. Satan, get the hands. Satan, get the hands. Demons, get the hands. Shrines, get the hands. Principalities, get the hands. Move from before me. Move from my side. Go behind me. In the name of Jesus. Come on, shout here. Yeah. One day, the disciples of Jesus came to Jesus. They were very excited. They went and did some missions work and they felt tickled and flattered because they saw one or two demons leave. And they came to Jesus. Boastful. That is full of boasting. Boastful. They came to Jesus. Boastful. And they said, sir, even the devils were subject unto us. Jesus looked at them in Luke chapter 10, the verse number 18 and said, I beheld Satan like lightning fall from heaven. And behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Satan is not on your head. Satan is under your feet. I said Satan is under your feet. When Senachari sent Rabshake and Rabshake stood at the conduit of the upper pool. He said he had come against Jerusalem a fenced city. He had come against Jerusalem a, a city whose king is King Hezekiah of all people. He had come against a city which was God's own city, Jerusalem. And he said, I am coming to take it. If Rabshakeh could be bold enough to take a city which belongs to God, you can take a city which belongs to the devil. You can take a city which belongs to principalities. From today, no more excuses. This city is too strong. This city is too hard. There are too many devils here. We overcome devils and demons and principalities and powers. I see you. You are a roaring lion. I see you. You are an elevated eagle. The righteous shall be as bold as a lion.
Come on, shout here. Today, when we were going for the Jesus march, I'm sure if you were looking, you saw things. You saw mosque. You saw these days even the idols have reduced. Some time ago on the road roadside, you will see idols in front of people's houses. Mama, you remember? These days, at least we thank God, the mosque have been re replaced by kiosk. But at first, on the roadside, it was pitot bars and idols. Now Jesus. He feared nothing. One day he made a statement about something you and I fear. John 10, 18. Listen to a statement. John 10, 18. Oh, glory. He's talking about his life. Go back to verse 17. Maybe to make the reading clearer. Therefore, does my father love me because I lay down my life that I might take it again. Stop. This is death, the thing you fear. Somebody said he's putting it down, his life, and he will take it again. Hey, this is real rough shaky. I will put down my life, I'll take it again. Verse 18. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have the power to lay it down. I have the power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my father. May you have the power to do anything God wants you to do in the name of Jesus. What Jesus is saying is that even death, I have the power to put down my life and to take it again. And the thing that makes many people so afraid in life is because they are afraid to die. Oh, many of you fear. You fear shrines will kill you. Witches will kill you. Yesterday, somebody was telling me something. They said, there's a village somewhere and the big men are saying they are coming to build houses in the village. I said, well, then they better pray before they go. Because many of them are afraid that if they build a house, witches will kill them. May you have power over all things including death whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die and whosoever believeth in me though he were dead yet shall he live come on clap those and scream it like your voice is yours and pray now so jesus is on the face of the earth and the man is like a rabshaki he fears nothing now go with me to Matthew chapter 8 and the verse number 28 and I'm going to use that scripture and close everything I want to tell you tonight. Matthew 8, 28. Now, the man Rav Shake, when you look at him, he's just an intimidator. Everybody say intimidator. Come on, shout it, intimidator. From today, may you begin to talk Listen, there is one man I know. If you can talk like him, no devil can disturb you. That man is called Daniel Kwame Jat, our architect. When he's coming through the gate, you know he has arrived. As soon as he lands, even if you are asleep, hop, 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 hop. all the dogs start, whoa, 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 whoa. They know the man is here. You cannot meet Mr. Jatin without getting intimidated. From today, ladies and gentlemen, even the way you walk will change. Those of you who walk like you are marching slow march. What devil fears somebody like this? You pray like a coward. You shout like you are timid. You dance like your hands are tied. When you clap your hands, we think you have caca on your hand. 
Come and clap and scream. Listen. You witness. You witness like a beggar. And you talk about money. As if heaven is epic. Your body is weak. Like a sissy. Your thinking capacity. Is weakened. As if you are just recovering from measles. But after tonight. I see power. From on high. Coming on your head. After tonight. People that are standing in front of you. You will tell them excuse me. I have a mandate. I didn't come here to beg. I didn't come to convince you. I came to take what is mine. From the days of John the Baptist. Until now. The kingdom of heaven suffered violence. And the violence taken by force. Listen. many years ago when this ministry started with me and a few people we had a rapture case spirit listen we were intimidators religious leaders will meet and the agenda on the table is brother Eastwood one day they took me to chief's palace they spoke 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 they said what can we do to this man the Bulgarian never said we cannot do anything. He comes from here. And it's true. One day, one day, I was ministering in this church and some of you were here when a lady was full of the devil and she said, it's true than ever. Why are you troubling us like that? Why are you troubling us like that? Some of you were here. You know my answer. I told the devil, I come from here. I'm a fra fra. You, where do you come from? Foul spirit. I rebuke you, stranger spirit. Get out of here in the name of Jesus. Come on, shout it. Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. Magnet, I know. Alex, I know. Solomon, I know. The devil knows you. Demons know you. When you mention the name of Jesus, they will flee. Come on, shout it. One day, one day, I was in tech. 1984. I don't know whether chairman remembers. I had a revelation. And I saw hell. And there were posters in hell. And they had written on them. East to this, they had, you remember it? They had written on the posters. And Alex too knew it. They had written on the posters. Wanted. In hell. Is to Danaba. That means I'm a wanted man. I woke up in the morning. And I took a big paper. And I wrote on it. I rebel against the council of hell. And I put it on the wall. I see a rebel. I see a rebel. I see a non-conformist. I see a resistor. I see a freedom fighter. I see somebody who will fight against anything the devil seeks to do against you. Come on, shout it! four years old and wanted so as for now I'm not only wanted I am wanted hunted chased terrorized but in all these things I am more than a conqueror because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world and greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world come on scream like you are bold that you understand it. When I got 
got married to mommy. She didn't know some of my culture. And then she got a baptism. One day we were sleeping and I got up. And I made Bye! Hey! Bye! 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 She said, What is that? I said, Warning shot. Every devil can hear a warning shot. Every principality can hear a warning shot. Somebody say, Hey! Warning shot! Give the devil a warning shot! Give Satan a warning shot! Give principalities a warning shot! You are here! Clap your hands on you people! Shout at the corner with the voice of Zion! Yeah! Jesus, nothing could intimidate him. The man came here on earth, feared nothing. Satan, get the hands. A wind rose up against him. He said, Peace. Be still. Looked at the Pharisees. Said, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees. Hypocrites. One day they came to him. They said, Herod is looking for you to arrest him. They thought he would be intimidated. He said, go and tell that fox. Herod is a fox. The MC is looking for you. Go and tell the fox. The minister for lands and so and so is looking for you. Go and tell the fox. The minister for so and so, IGP, something. Go and tell the vulture. That today I do miracles. And today, tomorrow, today I do miracles. And I cast out devils. And tomorrow, I will be killed. I will be buried. And I will rise from the dead. Go and tell the force. Go and tell the vulture. Anybody that wants to destroy you, stop you, limit you. They are dogs. They are cats. They are vultures. They are foxes. And receive the power to drag upon them. Destroy them. Walk over them. Satan is under your feet. Come on, shout yes. Scream! I can't hear you. Shout at your voice. Yeah! Yeah! I remember, I remember some, some time ago, some people were trying to intimidate me in Bogatanga. Ah, you know, Makrubin, ah. you know, you know why it's difficult to intimidate me in Bogatanga? It's very difficult, you can't intimidate me here. Now, Onipa Watna Sabozongo, and I have worked on Bola for years. You intimidate me. With what?
Today I Today I'm tired. I don't want to preach. Bang. Listen. Yesterday, you know, I was thinking about preaching rapture case here. Yesterday, I entered. I was roaming around the bathroom somewhere. Either, I don't know, in the house or wherever. I was walking about there and he said, tell my people nothing will intimidate them. Tell, tell my people they will intimidate everything. Get ready. Dogs will start running away from you. You will be coming and mosquitoes will be running away. Witches will flee from your presence. Wizards will flee from your presence. A thousand shall fall on your side. Ten thousand on your right hand. It shall not come nigh thee. Scream like I'm talking to you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Just give me only the organ, something. Huh? Prince, you know what to do. Hallelujah. Jesus. Me digging it, okay. Oh, me digging, oh, me digging, me digging, oh, at the dig camp. Oh, at the dig camp, Jesus. Jesus, Anna, who do you mean, Taki? Dark, I'm calling a near Dean Bruta. Matthew. If I was in the Methodist church, I'd say Matthew. Matthew. Prophet of Concord Matthew Matthew. Next time he's preaching, listen. Because he used to be a Methodist. In fact, he was going to be a Methodist catechist. And Nintam took him by tears and prayer. No, oh, he was going no way for Satan. That was his church, eh? You used to belong to no way for Satan church. He was in a certain spiritual church called No Way for Satan Church. Ay, ay, ay. Listen, I, I am about to unleash an irresistible, unquenchable unstoppable prophetic mandate on your life nothing can stop it from fulfillment and when Rabshake Jesus the one that came from the bosom of the father without much education he wasn't a soldier he was not a professional priest because he was not from the tribe of Levi, but he was of the tribe of Judah. Look at him in every way and he was disqualified. And yet, spiritually qualified. And when Jesus was come to the other side, into the country of the Gadarenes, or the Gergesenes, then met him two possessed with devils coming out of tombs exceeding fierce so that no man might pass that way. Stop there. No man might pass that way. Go to verse 29. And behold, they cried out saying, What have we to do with thee, Jesus? Thou son of God, art thou come hither to torment us before our time? Stop. Intimidate him. Go to verse 28. Let me release the prophecy. They stopped. They were exceeding fierce. So that no man might pass that way. 
there is a way in your country. A way in your city. A way in your village. A way in your family nobody has entered before. Some devils have stood there. And they said, in this family, nobody can be this. Nobody can be this. Nobody can be this. Nobody will live up to this. Nobody will be alive up to this. Nobody can get this. Nobody can do this. Nobody can build a house. Nobody can own a car. Nobody can own a plane. They have stood there. And they are saying, no man will pass that way. But I see you. Go to that place. The demons of the gatherings. They have possessed the place. Nobody could pass there. Listen, the way Judah was, nobody could go to Judah and speak nonsense. Rab Shakeh stood there and said, we are coming from the great king of Assyria. We will take the city. Jesus appeared. He said, devil, you have been in control for a long time. But for this purpose, the son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. I see somebody here today. Nobody in your family has married for 40 years without a divorce you will marry all your life without divorce I see you in your family none of the ladies have married for even 5 years I see you marry raise children build a family to the glory of God in the name of Jesus You live in a certain town. No ministry has been successful over there before. No man can pass that way. I see you passing that way. Any way that the devil has blocked. And they said this way is unpassable. I declare it a passable way. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The demons began to shout. Jesus intimidated the devils until the devil said, Why? Have you come to torment us before our time? What? Now, Jesus is a demon tormentor. May you torment demons. I see you. Enter a taxi. Two people are sitting in the taxi already. And they are witches. When you enter the taxi, they will start running out. Now, when we went to a place today with Jesus March and people were praying and suddenly they became angry. You know why they were feeling tormented like that? Or you don't know it was torment. We said they were angry. Because there are many people who are hiding in the prayer groups. Hiding in churches in the name of prayer. And they are practicing witchcraft. From today, I see you and intimidated. Listen. Some of you this year, an occultist whose house is near your house will sell the house and leave the environment. Listen. This year, people will ask for transfer and leave your office because of you. I speak the power of the word of God upon your life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Every tongue that right. Any witch. Any principality. Any power. Anything that wants to stop you. We stop it. Anything that wants to destroy you. We destroy it. Anything that wants to kill you. We kill it. Anything that wants to bring you back, we bring them back. Any trap the devil has set for you, may set them be set in his own trap, caught in his own trap, in the name of Jesus. Come on, shout it! Yeah. Then, the demons started negotiating. They said, Master, there are some pigs here. Allow us to go and enter the pigs. Jesus said, don't waste my time. One word, go.
go. And 6,000 demons left at once. I see an intimidator. Get ready to stretch your hand to shake people and they'll start going backwards. Get ready. Pastors, get ready. For witches to start screaming in church. You will take your eyes and look at the witch. Bam! And the witch will start screaming. I remember one day, I went to eat somewhere in a pastor's house. And they were serving us food. A woman was bringing food. And I told the pastor, I said, the woman is a witch. <laughs> I mentioned the pastor's name. I said, I'm a me, oh, baby. He said, how do you know? I said, it's all over here. He said, so what should we do? I said, don't worry. When she passes behind me, you will know. We were sitting there when the woman took the tray, came and passed behind the pastor and was coming to walk behind me and bring it to my left. The power of God hit her plus a tray. May you become an intimidator. May you turn the battle to the gates. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You are a strong man. You are a strong woman. You are not weak. I see you survive the witches and the wizards in the family, in the community. You are an intimidator. No politician will intimidate you. No boss will intimidate you. No rich man will intimidate you. No spiritual guru will intimidate you. Receive the capacity and overcome. Come on, shout it! Come on, shout it! Lift up your hands. Sit down. Put Acts chapter 4 verse 13 on the screen for me. Acts 4 13. Oh glory. Now. When they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. Jesus came from the bosom of the Father like Rab Shake, and he was bold. You and I will come from the bosom of Jesus Christ and we will be bold. When people see you, they will know you have been with Jesus in this convention. In this conference. They will start asking. Now what part of when you didn't say? I remember the first time my mother saw me preach on DVD. She asked, you see the one? They say, yeah. She said, Mama, she. she couldn't believe I could be that. But I'm telling you, you have become bold. All of a sudden, you believe you can do business with Asuma Banda. Oh, some of you, all of a sudden, you believe you can even fight Aite Powers. Oh, and Bukom Banku. Come on, shout it! Yes. You know, sometimes when I meet a president, like maybe ex president Kufu or maybe President John Mahama, and I'm conversing and I'm talking with them, and I'm normal, I'm like, hey, we are conversing and I'm not stammering.
the kingdom of God makes you bold. When you come from the presence of Jesus, you become bold. You don't fear anything. You are not disrespectful, but you are bold. I can tell you by the grace of God. I'm yet to see somebody who if I have to tell you something I really want to tell you I'll be so ashamed I can't say it. One day I was conversing with somebody I said something and then mommy asked I said you are the best Receive it. We don't fear anybody. Except God. You fear no man, no devil. No principality, no power. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. May you carry a fire on your head. Fire at your feet. May you be surrounded by the fire of Jehovah. May God build a wall of defense around you. May God exalt your horn like the horn of the unicorn as you push through resistance. By your God, you run through a truth, and by your God, you leap over the wall. You are not a beggar, you are a taker. Somebody say, I take. I take. I take. Lift up your hand to me. Take that oil and pour it on your head again. Receive the spirit of boldness. The rapture king spirit. Somebody take it. Pour it on your head and start praying. Don't pour all of it. You need it in the house. If you pour too much, you become overbold. They may think you have drunk. They may think you have drunk Hanakwana. Somebody pray. Boldness, the rapture case. Pain. In the name of Jesus, the rapture case. Pain. Hallelujah. Lift up your right hand. Say this after me, Heavenly Father. Tonight, I receive the rapture case spirit. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Give a big clap offering to Jesus. Scream like your voice is yours. Yeah.